Howdy friends, my name is Wesley. Welcome to the House of Tone. I started a YouTube channel to show what life was like as a band instrument repair technician. I appreciate you stopping by today. It's an early Sunday morning, a hot and humid Mississippi day. I'm gonna get some work done. It's been a week since our last video, but this week has been such a grind. It seems like it's been a month since I was last with you. It's been good though, really good week. Enjoying a nice cup of coffee this morning. Going to jump into the project. Do you remember the trombone project? What we've got here is a trombone in kit form. Well, today is the day we're going to be working on that. So here's our trombone kit. Start with the bell. The flange is broken away from the socket on the brace. These braces are broken away. We've got some serious damage. Tuning slide is not too bad. We've got a significant dent here. Obviously, this is stuck together, so we have to get this apart. And then we have to address the knuckle damage. We're going to make a bridge to go over this. We have to fix the slide. Uh, we'll have to realign everything and get it all put back together and remount it up. Let's jump right in and get going on it. Ordinarily, we'd put the bell on a wood assembly mandrel, have an assistant hold the slide, and we could separate it. Since we don't have a bell attached, my assistant, the lovely Miss K, is going to hold pressure on the slide while I use a slide separation tool. Let me show you about that. These tools are the Ferris G32 slide removal collars. They come as a set. They go between the slide tenon and the slide receiver. They're made in different widths, and sometimes you can use a single width. Sometimes you have to stack them. So how these work is you place it between the ridge and the threads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack my second one Okay, and then tap this down with your hammer and let it engage. Start driving it down. It pops off. No muss, no fuss. You can see where the brass has got burrs on it from being locked up. And there's some other damage that I'll show you. Here, these burrs where it was dropped we're gonna take care of all of this. On the bell side, you can see the shiny of the burrs in there, and we're gonna buff inside this as well to get rid of all of that. Now we're gonna remove the rotor and go ahead and chemical flush all of our pieces. Oh, look at that. Found a new problem. Solder joint broken. Okay. Look at that. So we'll have to do a remount as well. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do actually is take this flange off of the bell and take the socket off of the brace. And I'm going to repair this brace while... All the parts are in the chemical flush. So we're gonna silver solder the original flange and sock it back together. So what we have to do is take all of the soft solder wipe it back down to tinning, and then buff it off to make it clean. If you do not take off all of the old soft solder, during the heat process for the silver solder, all the old stuff will crystallize, and it will not take a solder joint when you go back to do it again. trying to 
smooth all this back down so that we can put it back together easy. We're not going to be able to move that later. So that we can set that in there. little bit of a build up over here we'll have to take care of on the overall it looks pretty good though. So here's a piece after I've got it rough shaped back in. A great penetration go all the way through. This is a nice strong joint. Okay, after our sculpting, that's our brace. Now that it's chemical flush, I've cleaned off all the solder. And now we're going to go after the dent work. Okie doke. So we start getting these roughed out. That's where the brace broke. Rough them back into shape. Okay. Rose brass is really easy to work, but it's also easy, really easy to wrinkle. So you have to be careful. I've gotten to where I use this mini Z so much. It's like if you're if you were talking about fishing, it would be called finesse fishing. And you can get in and do such finesse work. Something about the the way that the drive is set up back here, and you can really control what you're doing. I use it now for so much of my, what would have been hand burnishing work. I bought this tool for my mobile rig, but I find myself using it in the shop all the time. Or it'll be like what you saw a few minutes ago where I'll have part of it. I'll have one rig set up in the big Z and then I'll have another rig set up on this. It helps my workflow. With rose brass, you want to be careful not to be too aggressive. Use as wide as touch as possible. Okay, I think we're good. Got dent here, but we're going to do that with the roller. That looks bell looks real good. Doesn't even look like the same bell. Can you see it? You see that dent right there? 
You got it? Yep. Okay. Say bye bye. There you go. And I see another one right there. Seek and destroy. Or as Ernie says, lay in pipe. I know my friend Ernie up in Canada is busy getting back to work. It's awesome. He sent me some cool pictures of a bugle that he did after I did the video on the bugle. I really like the friendships that I've made over doing these videos. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually, I am punching dents. I'm punching little small hunting pecks. If you're not too far up in the throat, you can use it to, to take out little dents without having to change the tool. So it's a big time saver. Now when you're working on this knuckle, it's very, very soft. So you want to have all your control. And I'm using the threaded mouth pipe rod so that I can get in here and work all of this out. And you can see this knuckle's got some twist to it, but luckily it's not cracked. With all the other damage, that was done on this instrument. I was very, very worried about that. Okay, so now I'm going to hammer tap some high spots down and put this all together. Just easing it, flexing it. tacked into place it'll hold okay yep we're in the center line Now looking inside the tenon, we can see that there are some spots and some jagged places and some burrs. Okay, so what we're going to use is a, a small buff with the Dremel tool. And I'm going to use Triple E and we're going to go ahead and clean this for any burrs inside this receiver tenon. And we're going to do that before we install the rotor so we can clean out any debris that's left. And here you can see how polished it is. One of the last things I'm going to show you for today, we're going to get the dent out of this tuning slide. We're going to use the, this tool by Fariz. This is a dent ball driver. You've heard me talk about it before, but I've never demonstrated this. It goes in and pushes around. You use a dent ball set and you select the size that is closest to where you're trying to be. Squirt a little valve oil down inside. Take your dent ball, drop it in, move it around. The driver allows you to gently give it some nudges. You're going to take your pencil magnet and you can see that this, this ball was too big. So you come in with your driver from the other side. Drop it out. I always lay mine over on their side so I know where my starting point was. Come back in. Still a little bit in front of it. Of 
That one went through it to this side. I mark my ending point. Then I take my dent hammer and I tap the high spots. Gonna come up. Notice that you're not knocking it, you're just gently giving it a little bit of juice. From here I'm gonna, I have the ball directly under it this time. I'm going to try to shape The old school way of doing this was to tap it until as the piece becomes round, the ball will loosen up. Once you're satisfied with your hollow tap and your ball work, put some grease on your burnisher. Okay, before I go ahead and solder this back together, I'm going to finish up repairing the tenon. You can see where it's jagged from where it was probably dropped. And I'm going to take care of that. And I'm going to buff out some of these rough spots that I can feel on here. And then we'll solder the slide, the inner slide back together using the outer slide as a jig. And we'll finish her on up. So this is after we've buffed it down, we buffed it to shine, and then we got rid of all the burrs on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and check it in the tenon receiver to make sure it operates correctly. And our screw cinches it down tight. Okay, that's going to be good to go. Let's get soldered back together. It's like every trombone player is proud of. Great. Well, all right, that's a wrap. That trombone turned out really nice. From kit back to great playing instrument. The student that belongs to is headed for North Texas State to study his degrees. We want to wish him all the best. He's got a great horn to be playing on. Thanks for dropping by my shop today and hanging out with me. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks on some cool tools that I like to use when I'm doing this work. I'll leave the part numbers for the tools down in the description. So if you're a tech, you want to pick these up, then you'll know what to reference. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody. Channel's growing. Communication is good. I like the comments. I like interacting with everyone. I was real busy this week, so I've got some to answer from last week. But I'm, I'm happy for a busy band season. And I hope you techs out there are busy as well. This is Wesley signing out.